All right, everyone, hello. Welcome to our accessibility webinar. Um, my name is Sean Valcarcel, and along with my amazing colleagues here, Cheryl Chapman and Helen Graves, we are happy and excited to spend a few minutes with you today to just get really practical about accessibility in your online courses. This will help you in putting together your own courses. This will help you if you're involved in reviewing courses. If you're, you are with a local uh, peer online course review, otherwise known as poker team, uh, we're trying to cover all the bases. And again, uh, just make it as uh, efficient as possible your process. So we'll be showing you um, different uh, tools that we use. And of course, you know, everyone sort of ends up developing their own style. So uh, housekeeping, you know, here we are on Zoom. If you have any questions, we have the chat and we are recording. So we'll make sure that that's available to you. Um, it will be on the web webinar page because we don't have everyone's email so so you won't be getting it in your email but we'll make sure it's posted right and that would be at cvc.edu right bob do we have a page where we're putting these extant or i mean extraneous webinars they're go they're going right oh, on the we yeah we have the accessibility page yes. yeah so the page where you registered is where you'll find the archived recordings Yes. All right. Awesome. Okay. Um, I think I've covered everything. All right. Excellent. So now it's me. And what I wanted to do was just a short foundational piece about the idea of a toolbox. And thank you, Bob, for putting the, the link in chat. <clears throat> it, we talk about an accessibility toolbox because there are a variety of tools and the one thing that it's good to know about these tools is in terms of accessibility is there isn't a single tool at this point in time that can do everything with regards to checking that your content is accessible. And so it is really wise, if not imperative, that you have multiple tools that you're familiar with so that you can understand okay, when I'm doing this, I can use this tool. When I'm doing that, I can use this other tool. So that's what we wanted to talk to you about today is tools that you can have in your toolbox. And to begin, I'm just gonna do a very quick refresher of what we call the big seven, which are the, the main formatting guidelines that are most commonly needed for making content accessible. So you're gonna have a heading structure, meaning H2, H3, H4, that kind of thing. Using bold or italics or making the font bigger manually for a visual person would work. It wouldn't be effective for a person using a screen reading device. The second of the big seven is alt text that is needed for instructional images or marking it as decorative. It, it is something that is not germane to the instructional content. Lists, you don't wanna do them manually. You wanna make sure you're using the uh, list tool that's in Canvas, the rich content editor, if that's where you are or in Word or whatever application you're using. So you don't want to do dash space and then whatever, because that, again, won't register for students using a screen reader device. Links, and this is one of the things that currently, I don't know of any tool that can look at link text and evaluate whether it is meaningful or not. You don't want to use a URL because that'll just be gobbledygook that the student is hearing, H-T-T-P-S colon forward slash, you know, not that. So you want to have some kind of meaningful phrase that describes where the link's going, but there's no tool that knows how to evaluate whether the phrase that was highlighted for the link is effective. So that's something, you're, the other part of your toolbox is your own brain and eyes, 
So this is one where you're going to use the brain eye tools. And tables, they need to have proper uh, table headings and captions in order to be effective mm -hmm. for someone who is listening to the table being described to them, not just seeing the table visually. Color contrast and using color for um, interpreting information. For example, saying all the red words are nouns, the blue words are verbs. You need to make sure you're aware that that's not going to work for all your students. And the same with color contrast. It needs to be sufficient. And then captions is a really big one. And that also is, I don't know of a tool that can look at captions for you and determine whether they are accurate with punctuation and proper word matching. So that's that's another one where the brain eye tool is going to be your best friend. But that's the big seven. There are other components of creating accessible content, but these are the ones that you're going to find across the board for whatever application you may be using, meaning Canvas, Word, PowerPoint. It's all going to be these same formatting considerations. And so our focus today is the variety of tools that you have available with which you can check that your content has been properly formatted for the big seven. So we're going to briefly show you the Canvas Accessibility Checker, the Pope Tech Accessibility Guide, You Do It, and the Wave Tool. There are other tools available. These are ones that we know you have access to for free. And so we didn't want to be going in depth into something that you wouldn't be able to have available to you unless you got your college to pony up a bunch of money. So that's the foundation that we wanted to go on. Cheryl, are you ready with your poll? I am ready, so I'm going to launch it. I have a little frog today. <laughs> so we'd like to know, <clears throat> sorry, what tools you are using and also for captioning. So if you would just fill that out. And you'll see there are two questions. The first one is about the checker tool. And then the second one, as Cheryl mentioned, is about which tools you might be using for captioning. So be sure to scroll down. Good, people are a lot, lot of studio for captioning. Yes. A lot of the ex Canvas checker. But there's a whole variety, which I love seeing. If you say other on either one, if you'd let us know in chat, because it may be a tool you've discovered and we've never heard of it and we'd like to know more about it. So uh, if you know the name of the tool that you're thinking of when you say other, that'd be great. I never connected that phone to this. Okay. You wanna give them a, another 20 seconds, Cheryl, or? Yes, that would be great. <clears throat> I'm not seeing the update, so when I end it. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm seeing it. All right. Do you have end poll or do you want me to click it? I got that. Okay, you got it. And here we're going to share it out. Does it show sharing? Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm seeing it on my screen. I don't know if participants, okay, good. Alexandra seeing. gave us a thumbs up. Good. I don't see it. So tell us what happened, Helen. Well, it looks like in terms of the checker tools, the little man in Canvas is the big winner, not surprisingly, since it's right there in front of you. But hopefully after today, you'll have a few other ideas to uh, serve as companions for the little man so he doesn't get lonely. Um, Pope Tech would be the second highest rating in there. And then Wave Tool, which we love. And of course, Design Plus, if you've got it, you do it. There's both, and we'll uh, talk about this when we talk about you do it. There's a free version and a paid cloud version. Fewer people are using the paid one for obvious reasons. And then in terms of captioning, Studio is the clear winner with YouTube being a, a fairly close second and Zoom as well. And then Play Posit is mentioned, Amara, Camtasia, all the other ones. So it's, it's good. People are already using a wide variety of tools. Did anyone check Shire? 
Yes, we got um, one person checked Shire, which is a, a new tool that people may not be familiar with. We're not talking about it today, but it is there is information, I believe, on the Community College Accessibility Center website about Shire. So you can check it out there. Cheryl, anything else you want to say about your poll? Nope, I'll take it out of the water now. OK. Excellent. So we're going to dive right in and talk about tools. If you have a question, I, I have a, a refinement on Sean's request that you put it in chat. If you could put a question mark in front of your question, that way when we're scrolling through, it's easier for us to not miss your question as a question, because um, there's often so much going on, it's hard to tell. Uh, it's easy to questions slip through the cracks. OK, so I want to talk about the accessibility checker, alias the little man in Canvas. So I'm going to go into Canvas and show you. And hopefully, I lost my green thing, but hopefully you're still seeing my screen. I always hate it when I'm five minutes in and somebody will say, um, Helen, do you mind sharing your screen? I, say, oh, I thought I was. So the little man, in case you're not yet familiar with it, when you click the editor for the page, you will find it right here. And a new, relatively new refinement that Canvas has added, is it will alert you as to how many errors it's noting on the page. When you click it, it will walk you through whatever errors it's finding. So the first thing it tells me is, I don't have good color contrast on this heading. And it's as simple as taking what I call the little magic circle and well, actually watch this blue apply button as I move the magic circle. Now I've gotten to a color that has good contrast. I don't even have to know any of the details about it and I could just click apply. Then it goes to the next thing and tells me, whoops, my list is not appropriate. I can click the little box and say apply. And then I get the happy balloons. <laughs> However, this is what I want to show you about the little man. He is good with several things, color, tables, lists in particular. He's not so good with everything else, which would be headings, alt text, meaningful links, and captions. And one way you can tell is I got the little balloons, but it's actually a false positive. And so I know that because I can use either the wave tool or, and we're going to talk about these, so don't worry if you're not familiar with them yet. If I go back into the page editor, the net tool I think Cheryl's going to be talking about is Pope Tech. It tells me I actually still have another error and a couple of alerts that the little man didn't catch. So this is one example of why you really want to rely on a tool box instead of a single tool, because they all have strengths and gaps, we'll call them. And so if you just rely on one, you may be getting false positives when you're working with your content. The other tool I want to talk about real quickly is the wave tool, which I happen to love. And it's free to everybody. It is a browser extension. And I'm going to put that link in chat so you can go get it. It works with both Chrome and Firefox. It doesn't like Edge. And I had one person say, well, who does? But you can always use it with Chrome and Firefox. And it's as simple as once you have the extension on your browser, I'm on a web page and I can just click the little wave icon and it gives me a readout. I'm not going to go into all the details right now. Uh, we'll talk about that when we go into the breakout room. So you can meet me there if you want to learn more about the wave tool. But one, one thing I personally love about the wave tool is I don't have to open the page editor to see what's going on. So if I had a clean page, meaning I wasn't seeing these red and gold alert and error things, I was seeing that my headings were properly done and I didn't have, you know, everything was good. I could just go to the next page. I wouldn't even have to open and close the page editor. I'm just clicking the wave tool. Boom, it's done. I'm on to the next page. And I like it because I can also see what's going on and look at my um, 
what do we call this alt text to see if it's appropriate. I mean, it just gives me a, a nice little readout of things. Um, again, you would want to use it in tandem with other tools, not rely on just the wave tool alone. I'm going to put in chat a tutorial that I made on using the wave tool. I believe it is part of our course design resources shell, which is a public shell open to everyone. This, the wave tool updates occasionally. So you may go look at the video and see that there are a few differences in how it's displaying, but the functionality is the same. So don't worry if it looks slightly different from what you're seeing on your screen, all of the things, the, the information that you're getting from it is still gonna be the same. Um, any questions about either the little man or the wave tool at this point in time, knowing that we're going to dive more into the how to in the breakout rooms, but any kind of general questions or about accessibility before Cheryl shares with you, Pope Tech? Just a quick one. Um, yes. What does, the, what does the canvas man uh, miss? You said alt text and what else? The he's, he's good. You can trust him with color, tables and links. Everything else, you're going to want to either check it manually. Excuse me, I said links, I meant lists. 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 He will alert you if the list was created manually. He won't tell you if it really should be a bulleted versus numbered, but that's kind of okay. splitting hairs. But he's really good with color, and he's really good with tables. And Wanda, you had a comment or question? Yes, I'll put it in the link, but Jay Pope sent out a new, a new article with really good tutorials on different aspects of using the WAVE tool. Oh, okay, great. I think so I'll put that you. link in the... Uh, great. Next. Thank you. I, I love the WAVE tool, even though we have so many others. And as Cheryl's going to tell you, Pope Tech is based on the WAVE tool. I still think there are a lot of times when having the WAVE tool available is a really great quick and easy way to do a, an accessibility check. Other questions or comments about what we've talked about so far? We want to make sure you're getting what you need. Cost for Wave is free, Rogelio. That's one of the main reasons I love it, is you just go into the Chrome browser marketplace and that link I put in chat earlier, click it, and add it to your uh, browser bar. And then Wanda just put in chat the article that she was mentioning from Jay Pope. Thanks, Wanda. Okay, I'm gonna get out of here. Cheryl, you want me to stop sharing because you're gonna share, correct? Or do you just I, want to slide? No, I, I'm going to go, I'm okay. gonna share. Well, then I'm gonna stop sharing. Because then I'd have to make you my, my Vanna. Yeah, well, click away. All righty, let's get rid of all these little tiny things. I put in the chat the Accessibility Center website that you can find a lot of information, especially the Tools tab. It has a lot more than we're talking about today. But now I'm going to move this and get my little deck out here. And I'm going to go down to my slide. There we go. Okay, so two things that are really exciting. Pope Tech is free to all the community colleges, and you will just need to request it from the Accessibility Center. Then they just work with you to um, add in the LTI, and then it'll pop up on your Canvas pages with the little P, which we're gonna take a look at. And as Helen mentioned, if you use the WAVE tool first for that overview, then you can have a better idea of what you need to look for, right? And to see what you have to fix. So I like to use that too in the beginning, <clears throat> excuse me. So let's see if we can go right here. Do our other example of Helen's bouffant hairdo. Is that you, Helen? I think so. No, I just loved the photo. It's great, it's a great photo. So I'm gonna click on edit <clears throat> and as, if you notice too, when Helen fixed the list, it didn't take away the 
manually entered numbers. So you have to make sure that you take those out as well, because I always forget. I'm going to close design tools, which is so cool too. Right down here at the bottom, you're going to see the Pope Tech window or button. The errors and the alerts, I like to check them all. We should because headings, tables, and lists, even though it says it's an alert, they're very important. So let's look at the first one. You click on the little carrot. This was worth the free tool. Finding empty links in your page is ridiculous, right? You get to the page and you see those two little link things and you're like, where is that link? Usually it happens when you um, delete the text and forget to remove the link, right? So with this tool, it will show you where the empty link is and you can remove it, which is fabulous. The other thing that you can do is, I removed it. The other thing that you can do is if it has empty alternative text, and this is a little tricky because it is actually marked as decorative, but it gives you another chance to look at it. So whether you want to say three men fingers, whatever, but it is marked as, as uh, decorative. So that would be um, doable in this case. But if you wanted examples, that's the other thing about Pope Tech. It gives you little tips and tricks, which are fabulous. And then the alternative text that was <clears throat> the one that's really egregious is when you forget to change the file name. So you can here add a descriptive text for the black and white photo, blah, 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 or you can mark it as decorative. But what we like to do is take out the actual text from the alternative text box before you apply um, mark as decorative. So that's gone. Then the next one is text and contrast. As Alan showed you with the little man in the magic circle, this too has a slider. It tells you <clears throat> that you failed and you'd wanna fix it. So it's already highlighted. And then you can take the slider left and right until it hits pass. Oh, fail pass. So there we go. It tells you the ratio, which is very important as well. Click apply and it's done. Now, when you get down to headings, like I said, tables, lists, and documents and videos are alerts, but look what happens. The heading outline tells me that I have an H3 at the top of the page right here. Actually, no, that's why it's good. Uh, I set this up and I didn't tell Cheryl and Sean, so I'm going to jump in and explain. Quick links is the H3 and what why it's good to double check the structure using Pope Tech is because you can look and see, oh, you it did get changed. Yeah. Okay, then uh, never mind. Let, I'll no, shut no. up. No, never shut up, Helen. <laughs> so uh, what I was going to say is I'm going to give a quiz question. Like, do you remember that the title of the page in, in Canvas is an H1 heading, right? So the next one should be H2, but it's H3. And then it goes to H, uh, H3 again and then down to H2 for contacting me. But it's right here on in the um, about window, <laughs> excuse me. So now I'm gonna change this to two. I'm gonna change this to three and apply. And then it's, it's great. And what it is showing, this is where I was trying, I got mixed up. If you'll notice in the heading structure, it shows the welcome, I'm glad you're here and then contacting me, but it's not showing quick links. Even though quick links looks like a heading, that's one of those examples of where it's visually looks like a heading, but it wasn't structured as a heading. And you wouldn't know that unless you went in and checked especially, but the Pope Tech heading structure list, you can look and see, wait a minute, it doesn't say yeah. contact me. I need to make sure that's formatted. So it's a quick, easy way without having to go into the HTML mm -hmm. or anything to make sure your heading structure is complete. Sorry, you don't want it. No, not at all. And you don't want to miss it. So now that I know that quick links is not a link, personal preference, I don't usually bold my links. So I take that off. But then I just change it from paragraph um, to H2 because it is an H2. And then you can rescan the page and see it brings it back into your list. 
and then you can go from there. And actually, I guess this could be H2 as well, right? Because they're all, all headings. One other thing is the questions that I told you about the tips and tricks. It gives you detailed information if you ever really want to know about um, each level of compliance. And now I'm going to go down to tables and lists. Layout table, layout table, layout table. Everybody loves layout tables, but don't use them. As a general rule, we don't use a layout table just to make the page look better. There is a little bit of code that you can put into the HTML that will make it accessible. But for general purpose purposes, we want to fix this table. Now, if you look at it visually, you can see that eh, looks like there's a header row there, but it's not identified. So if you set, if you click the buttons or set first row as header and click apply, it goes away because now it's it's um, a header row. When you go into the possible list in Pope Tech, which it was different in the little man, right? But you can fix it here as well. But you get a choice. Do you want an unordered list or an ordered list? I'm choosing ordered list, but look what it does. It takes out those other numbers. So you don't have to go back and check. That's why I like this tool. Okay, so we did that. The next one we're gonna do is documents and videos. Now, two things. We always have to look for captions manually, no matter what, because no matter what tool you're using. But the link to the document that's here, it's asking if it's you know, a real link, where is it going, is it viable? It turns out that this one doesn't work because it's going to, to Zoom, but this is where you can change the link text and also check to see if it's if you need to add more um, meaningful text to that link. So it's bringing it to your attention. So it's nothing really to do there. But the last one, two things. What should we do here? Well, we need to give it meaningful link or meaningful text. Usually you have to go see the video, right? So let's just make something up. I'm going to go in here. Probably cute puppies or cute kittens, because that's what I always use when I put a video on a page. Let's do that. Cute puppies and kittens. So what you're going to do is just highlight the um, link itself. And then you're going to make the actual text into a link. Just by pasting right in there. So now you have a meaningful you have meaningful text for your links. And it's, since it's a video, you're gonna to wanna to go and make sure that the captions are correct. This has a lot of information too about that. So I think we've, let's rescan. Let's go back and check what happened here. We're gonna slide again. Oh, these are the actual links in Canvas, which they have to be fixed. I'm gonna rescan. And I only have two alerts. And those two alerts, you're not going to be able to um, clear. But at least you know you're there. So does anybody have any questions? Um, yeah, um, Cheryl, I have that issue in our Canvas instance where the links, when you have a link and you know how it changes color, and that color is not accessible. So do I need to tell my faculty go in and change just all those colors or... It's a dilemma. We've been in touch with Instructure for a while. Here's the dealio. There is some code, JavaScript, that you can put at your root level account that will change this color everywhere. But it opens up Pandora's box because if there's sub-accounts, if any department Canvas pages have their own theme, then it's going to get messed up. So we're still working on finding a solution. But if you can go to your Canvas admin, and if it's straight ahead, just change your theme color, then you should be good. Okay. I also it is annoying. <laughs> yeah. It is annoying. And we we've had a couple of accessibility people tell us that the contrast is close enough that they wouldn't 
say we need to tell faculty you have to go in and manually change the color of every single link. But Cheryl's solution is really the best one that we have for right now until Canvas fixes it everywhere is to have your Canvas admin create a global solution for your entire Canvas's instance of Canvas. Excuse me, your entire campus instance of Canvas. Do, do you have any team suggestions that all the colors in there are accessible? They have two. So I will find the information hopefully before the end of this and then pop it in here for you. Sounds good. Thank you. And Lisa, you ask about is it okay if an alert does not clear? Cheryl, do you want to address that or? Again, they're not going to clear. There's no way to clear it because all it's telling you is go ensure that your captions are synced. So that's not going to go away. What we tell everybody with all the tools is please fix the errors first. But in this case with Pope Tech, because it's so closely aligned with the Wave tool, it's going to give you those alerts because they want them fixed, but they don't make them like mandatory, if that makes sense. So I wouldn't worry about the alerts, but but pay it, you know, like go through them at least once. And if it is an alert you can address, then we strongly recommend you fix it. If it's something like the video where it's just telling you there's a video on the page, you need to check the captions. We've actually asked Pope Tech if they'd be willing to give us a dismiss function so that once you've looked at that video, you can dismiss the alert and then you won't keep seeing it every time you go to the page. And Jay was very open to that, but I also know they have a lot of other stuff going on. So that's probably not the very top of their to-do list, but it is something that would be nice. But just know some alerts you can't get rid of, the ones you can, we recommend you do. And because the Wave tool is focused on the, the page on in the browser, it's going to notice the link to a document, but it just asks you to make sure that that's accessible. So it comes back to you anyway. Hopefully that made sense, Lisa. And Curtis wants to know, have we found the tools fighting each other? You mean giving different results? So one tool would say something is aligned and the other tool would say it isn't. Is that what you mean, Curtis? That's that's what I mean. Yeah. I have not noticed that, but maybe it's just because I've been working with them so long, I'll disregard, you know, subliminally disregard something. I don't know. Cheryl or Sean, have you or or anybody else that's really well versed in all these, have you noticed any things that we could give people a tip on? Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't crossed anything like that. Yeah. What I've noticed is the more the false positive thing that we showed with the little man, where it may say because it just doesn't recognize it, and another tool will say, so in a sense, yes, that's where they're fighting because Canvas gave us the false positive. It said everything was fine, and the Wave tool told us, or Pope Tech said, no, you still have heading and list issues or whatever issues. So in that sense, but I haven't found it to be something that confuses me which I would think would be probably what you're aiming at, Curtis, is how do I know which one is correct? Yeah, the, the paid ones we're gonna take more value to than the ones we that we don't pay for so we can safely ignore them, is that right? Not necessarily, mm -hmm. um, but that's why we're talking today, what, what we're kind of hierarchy, putting things in a hierarchy. So Canvas is available to everybody and it's probably currently the least trustworthy. Pope Tech is free to us. It's way more trustworthy, but there's still some things you're going to have to check manually. Sean's going to talk about you do it. It could also be free to us. There are things it's going to be really good at, things that you're going to want to know. Yeah, I'm not going to rely on it for this. So it really just depends on the tool more than whether you're paying or not paying. And we're paying for Pope Tech. The, well, you know, we are. Dawn is. Yes, yeah, Dawn is paying so for free. us for Pope Tech. But it's free for us. Same thing with you do it. It's free if you install it, but you could pay for it through City Labs. And then we don't, we're not going to talk about Design Labs too much today, but that's the other more robust um, tool. But when you think about it, we're just trying to bring awareness to the things that are on your page. Personally, I don't use the a little man too much anymore because I use Pope Tech or Design Plus, right? It just captures more of it. But I think the key is that we're training faculty to look. 
And Pope Tech does have a dashboard, which will show you all of your courses. And if you have it set at the, the root level, it will show all of the college's courses. So hopefully we've been testing that out a little bit too. And some of the colleges are purchasing it and they're finding that they can they can map it out a lot easier to see you know, where the highlighted areas are. Like if it's, well, anyway, where the highlighted areas are. So what's your experience though, Curtis, with the tools? I've just started now with Pope Tech and it looks okay. like it's pretty stable, so. Okay, thanks. But I'm an ally person before. Oh, you used ally, okay. I think you'll find the dashboard similar when it comes out. Yeah, Don yeah. is working hard, I know, to get funding from the Chancellor's Office for the dashboard for us, which would be a great supplement to the page tool already. So we're hoping, hope we're, we're, we're behind you, Don, on that one. Thank you. So any other questions for this section of Pope Tech? All righty then, I will stop. And now take it away, Sean. You're muted. Sean. All right. I am not muted now. I'm here to talk to you about you do it. And, you know, I've already seen in the comments and we've been saying that uh, the goal of this is to really have that toolbox at your side. Ultimately, you yourself are the accessibility checker. Um, so, you know, again, we'll, we'll be reiterating that uh, throughout this webinar. So you do it is another tool that uh, you can check in your canvas. It might already be available to you. Uh, if it is not, the first thing that I would point you to is to go into your settings and then go into your uh, navigation area. And it's possible that it's uh, just not um, enabled. So I just did that. So I enabled it. So I see it now on my um, course navigation menu. And this is what you do it is good for, is if you wanna get a general scan of an entire course. So it's, we're gonna get in here and look at it now, but it's, it's not foolproof, none of these tools are. You know, I think I've heard Dawn say that um, it, I forget the percentage, but she actually gave an actual percentage Using all the best tools, it's only it's not going to get 100%, not even close, right? But it's going to give you a really good idea uh, of where to make the checks, check it, checks and make the fixes. So I'm going to go ahead and go into You Do It Now for this course. I actually pulled one of my courses from a few years ago. And the first thing that you do it gives you the disclaimer is it does not necessarily mean your course is fully accessible so again even the tool itself is letting you know but it can do a lot of good to help you with essentially your workflow how do i work best okay so what you do is you set this up for a scan and you have options here okay you can, it defaults to selecting every item in the course, okay? Uh, if you look at our accessibility tips, you'll see that one way you could approach it is to start just one section at a time, right? Start with announcements or start, you know, maybe save pages for the end, okay? Or you could select all initially and go from there. Um, and then over here, you can select if you just want to scan it for what you do it will deem to be actual errors versus uh, what it's been programmed to find as just simply suggestions, okay? Uh, you can change these once you do the scan, okay? So um, if you did have older scans, you would see that in viewing your old reports. You could always go back to that but this is my first scan for this course. So I'll go ahead and uh, hit the scan button. And 
while that's scanning, you can go get a cup of coffee or something. Um, but once that scan comes up, then it will do its best essentially to fully scan for any issues in all of your announcements, all of your pages, all of your assignments, everything. Okay, so while that's doing that, let me just move over to our site. And in our accessibility toolbox, you'll see a little blurb here about you do it. And here's a link to installation directions in case you don't happen to see it in Canvas. And then you can always go down to the tips and tricks. And here's some information on you do it. Okay, so it looks like the scan is finished. And it begins with a full report. Everything in red are the errors. Everything in blue are the suggestions. And again, depending on your workflow, you can say, okay, I just wanna start with one section at a time, or let's say I don't wanna look at suggestions yet. So I'm gonna actually turn suggestions off. So I just click on the button, it turns them all off, or you can itemize. I just wanna look at errors, and maybe that some particular errors you don't wanna look at yet. Maybe you'll just turn one off here or, or whatnot, okay? So now, if I go over to, I'm, I'm selected to summary right now, okay? Uh, if I say, well, I'm gonna be one of those that I wanna look at pages first. I'm gonna click on pages. And what I'll see here is the list of all the pages throughout the course that is showing at least one error. Okay, so I can start from the top. I click on the plus button. Okay, and this is a unit two overview page. Um, you could view the source of this issue, but it's only going to show you where the actual error is. So this is dealing with color contrast. So it could prompt you to change that hex code. Okay, so keep in mind this is HTML. So you could choose to fix it there. And maybe it looks like maybe it'll give you a suggestion. You got a color palette. So that's nice. Okay. Uh, another good approach you can take is to go ahead and just open the page itself. And then that takes you to the actual page. And then from there, I could say, well, I'm going to look for the error. And I could actually go through. This is another way that you can um you know set up your workflow is that maybe i just right click and open up these pages and again the good thing about this is i'm getting an overview of the entire course so let's say i went through all of those so now looking for color contrast i can look through whichever pages were flagged i make the fix go in edit whatever the problem is, make the change. Not gonna change anything here. All right, I'm done. Close out the page, go on to the next page. And then when I'm finished clearing the tabs, then all right, good, I knocked that out, okay? So, um, let's see. Let's take a look at one that has a little, few more errors. All right, view the source here. Headers, rows, you fix it. Okay, so I could add a row. Let me see how this goes. All right, so now I can, so I, apparently I fixed that um, table. So I can go and check. So I just click on the page. And this page actually has some tabs. So somewhere in there, it should have a table. And ultimately, right, what all of these tools are doing 
is they are scanning through the HTML, right? So sometimes it's just a matter of getting into the HTML. And the more you get familiar, you learn a little bit of HTML at a time. Sometimes you'll find yourself just going straight through the HTML. So see here, I found a table and I have a single item, it looks like, unit nine playlist in a table. So I'm gonna click back to the real um, content editor. Oh, and there we go. So I in a, uh, incorrectly used the table to space out these audio tracks. Right? Bad Sean, bad Sean. This was Sean in 2017. <laughs> right. We've all learned a lot since. Right? <laughs> So here, all right, so now I'm working with some different tools. So I'll go to little man and I'll say uh, playlist and I'll apply that caption. So now I'm using that tool. See, that's, that's the cool thing about this is now I used you do it where it shines and it led me to the pages throughout the course. So now I can use other tools that might be a little bit simpler to use, okay? So when all is said and done, let's say I completely fix the pages, then I can go back and I can do uh, scan this course again. So that way, once you've gone through and you're like, okay, I think I've made the fixes, then you'll see what you do it has to say about it. And maybe there's some items that you just simply ignore because you know that they're fixed and you know, or maybe you do it will bring up other pages that it missed in the first scan. But notice that the more you clean up um, the course, uh, the, the less it's going to weigh on the tool. So the tool actually tends to, all of these tools, they, they tend to work better with, when they're not as overloaded. So there's a quick rundown on you do it. Sean, was there any alt text? available we could show well let's see because it's pretty cool to be able to fix it in here but i didn't see any so you probably caught them all there, there actually should be one um because i know and i found one earlier in this course um let me see let me go to the home page right quick Okay, so final week, all right. Because actually I know this banner, it's got the wrong. Okay. Alt. So final week, let me go back to you do it. Let me see if it brought it up. And I'm gonna command F. Final, oh, well, it doesn't, it oh, doesn't have to come up. <laughs> so I'd have to rescan it. And, and see, okay. let's, let's do this real quick, all right? So let me, oh no. I wanted to actually go, oh, I know what I did. Okay, I can't cancel it. I was just gonna go in and deselect and then just choose pages and then just choose errors. Right. And then I could scan there and then, you know, I would see if that, uh, that home page that I currently have there uh, would would get read. So, but it's pretty cool because then if it brings it up, you can, you know, fix it and it'll do it on the page. So That's here, cool. there's 13 alt text um, errors. So I'm going to close out suggestions, and I'm going to close out the other items. All right. So now for alt text issues, two in assignments and 11 in pages. So I'm gonna go to the 11 pages and look at, there you go. There's the final week. So let me go back. Uh, and let me just open it up here. Okay, so I'm gonna see here, you fix it. All right, well, let me view the source first. Okay, there you go. So the alt text here is history of rock and roll, but then it has the dot PNG. So I just want history of rock and roll, copy that, 
paste it into the new alt text. Well, let me write it correctly. And submit. So now I should be able to go to the home page and check that. And there you go, fixed. All right, so that works. Okay, cool. Uh, does it do discuss? Yes, it does. It does um, any item in the course, uh, discussions, assignments, quizzes, anything that has a rich content editor, um, it, it'll it'll find it. It's looking. It's the tool is looking for that HTML that you find anywhere that there's a rich content editor. Uh, you'll find it. Okay. And I'm just looking through questions in chat. And are there any other questions? When are we going to be able to eliminate all but one? All but one tool? All but... <laughs> or all but one error? All but one tool. When our culture gets serious about accessibility, which probably won't be in our lifetimes. So. This is something that we're always preaching in poker is get um, the prep part of your process with instructors, get that down where instructors are learning how to design courses and built into that design is how to make it accessible from the get go. And, you know, I, I've seen some campuses where it's, it's even like two semesters, like almost like a full school year that an instructor has to go through all that training and they involve mentorship before the course even gets reviewed. And it'd be amazing. I mean, if you just, you'd, like you'd be living in reviewer dream world, you know, to just have all these courses come through. So, you know. I will say though, you do it gives you, Curtis, the best overview. And because you can drill down with the instructor and say, let's concentrate on just this one thing then it gives them more of an option for even departments too if they wanted to do it together you know they can share their reports but um it looks overwhelming at first to some but it really because you can drill down it's really effective i'm a big uh believer in using uh, uh all the checks that we can get like the uh, chrome the Chrome browser add-in for Grammarly that helps a lot when you're reading lots of lots mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want to turn in things that have misspelling errors, and those can be eliminated. Um, sometimes the word is spelled correctly; it's the wrong word. Uh, but but this is the same sort of thing. We got to get yeah. students doing this. Speaking of though, on that page from the Accessibility Center, and you go to Tools, there is a, a tab for Grackle, which is the Accessibility Check of checker for google so if you're using that that it's also on that page how do you spell that g-r-a-c-k-l-e oh. and as sue pointed out there won't ever be one tool because well probably there's always going to be the need for a manual check on certain things so we'll Sean always be using our brain as well as whatever else yep Sean, it's on the disability center one huh? we yep. would like to do two breakout rooms, which will basically be a repeat of themselves. Cheryl, Sean, and I will each be in a room. Hello, um, I, have, I have a question, but you may be able to answer. Maybe. Uh, okay, let's try it. Okay, so um, we have recently at Ohlone, uh started using Hypothesis, the an annotation tool. Are you familiar with Hypothesis? I, I've, yes, I haven't used it, but I've seen it demonstrated and I'm aware of it. So the question I have is the asynchronous interpersonal communication course I've been teaching this semester at Ohlone, we've used uh, Hypothesis extensively. For example, all the textbook chapters are capable of being, uh, being annotated. Um, so the question is with regard to with regard to links that either I or other students insert, which really is I made part of the assignment as for each of the chapters, do we need to be concerned about those links? 
created by either me within hypothesis or best practice yes because if you're familiar and i'm assuming you're thinking about somebody using a screen reader device and links being being meaningful text correct exactly it, they'd still be able to access the link but what a screen reader device would do is literally read out the entirety of the url so if it is a, a mishmash of numbers and letters and extraneous punctuation that's what the student is going to hear they're going to have no idea which link is going where so they're going to have to open every link in order to know so help and helping your students just learn to live in a diverse world train them to say hey we need to create a descriptive link that just gives the title of your you know whatever it is or some unique title so that a student hearing the links read to them will know where they're going to end up does that make sense the way i said it you know, no no that's, that's that's that clarifies the issue entirely uh because i believe i've left the the linked link text to the students themselves and, and they're not going to know necessarily no they don't like so all all they've been doing is uh, let's say they you know we were covering a lesson in um listening or other interpersonal communication issues and and the uh what they're what they're typically doing is they're all copying each other by highlighting uh like check here with here being the right. uh which is not the text. yeah so you may need to give a little a little brief tutorial on what meaning good meaningful link text is and we have resources you are happy to copy from and all of that but yeah that would really um be supportive of a student who is using a screen reader device so that they're not spending inordinate amounts of time trying to figure out what link is what yeah well, yeah. I guess fortunately or unfortunately, this semester we have not had uh, accessibility issues with, to my knowledge, with any of the students in the courses I'm teaching. But I see the problem that we need to fix. So. Yeah, good. Thank you. Very well, I don't know. I don't know where Cheryl. Oh, there's Cheryl. Where's Sean? There's Sean. Okay, good. So we're a little behind time now, but maybe we have like a quick seven minutes for a second breakout room. And then we can come back and do a two minute, you know, debrief or something. Or or yeah. do people do people want a second opportunity for another breakout room? Or do you feel like you just want to go right into a debrief? Let's be democratic about this. Democratic. Well, we lost some people, I think, because we did lose some people. Yeah. They clicked the wrong and button. Are, and we are scheduled to end at 2 30 or we're 2 30, right. So we we could do like a um a 10 minute breakout room if you want, and then come back and do a five minute close. Or if you don't want to do another breakout room, we can just close from here. So what you could put in chat or you could say out loud. So Allison wants you do it. So she would like another breakout room. Okay, here's let's do this. We'll do breakout rooms. If you want to stay and go to a second topic, great. If you don't, thank you so much for joining us for today. We hope you got some good information. And as we said before, the link to this recording will be archived on the webinar page. Um, I don't know if I can find that again, but we'll put I'll it. I'll find it. Okay. So that you can just um, get the recording later. And Rochelle, yes, you have your hand up. I just wanted to ask a quick, quick question when I was in my, my breakout with Sean. I thought maybe it would be good if you did a workshop or someone did a workshop on using the immersive reader. So some of the accessibility tools for students. Mm. I do a lot for in terms of but... funding. I don't know if we're allowed. So that okay. would be kind of a, a, a Bob and Marina question as to, you know, because that can get sticky of course. sometimes. Sure. sure. But it, it certainly is something people could use some training on. We just may at one may not be able to to do it well and and maybe faculty would use it as well because faculty could listen to their pages and see what students might be um experiencing right so maybe that would be the for faculty okay. that yeah thank you you betcha thank you so i sh oh okay we can join the breakout rooms again if you want to if not thank you and have happy holidays oh there they come you're our gold star students. You're still here. 
which means we know you're good instructors and you the love perfectionists it and you care. <laughs> Thank you so much. Any last minute questions or comments? Oh, can we reach out to you if we do have additional questions? Absolutely not. Okay. No, of course you can. Yes. <laughs> I saw Cheryl nodding, so I went yes. with that. <laughs> you may. I'll, I'll contact Cheryl. That's because I know what she was going to say. So <laughs> I always say that as a joke. Of course, yes, we are here to help. And, and the Accessibility Center, I mean, we're all sort of street cred accessibility people, but we're not formally trained accessibility experts. And so if you have a pretty complex type question you we're we're probably going to end up sending you to the accessibility center but if it's something like you know can i put an h2 here kind of yeah we can help you with all that kind of stuff okay perfect thank you guys yeah. so much appreciate y'all yeah thank that, you very much you. for all your <laughs> you're very welcome Bye. thank you for taking the time to be here and i hope you will see you again in another at another time and place yeah, thank Great. you happy yeah. holidays all right, you so too. Happy holidays. Bye.